on today's podcast. I have a lot to catch you up on over the last two weeks. I have been very, very busy and um, I actually have two finished objects for you and four whips. <laughs> so we have a lot to talk about today. <laughs> So hi friends, welcome. My name is Amanda and welcome or welcome back to Ace Creates. This is my podcast where I will catch you up on everything that I have been working on. And for those who are not new to the channel, you can see we are in a different spot. Uh, the yarn closet made another great move <laughs> in our house. Uh, my yarn storage has moved uh, several spots uh, over the years and it is now living in our living room, um, making this beautiful kind of focal point centerpiece wall. Um, and so there's definitely some shorts I'll link below if you haven't checked them out of the move from um, our primary bedroom to the living room. It's pretty cool to see the transformation. It also gave me a great opportunity to de-stash yarn, yarn that I had been wanting to de-stash. I had gotten a bunch of free yarn from Facebook Marketplace a few years ago. That actually is what started off my channel. Um, but a lot of it was gimmicky yarn or like the faux fur stuff, stuff that I never was really going to use. Um, so I was able to rehome most of that yarn and I've been rehoming some other yarn. And so now what's here is all the yarn that I have, which is still a lot, but all the yarn is visible. There's no secret yarn in any other corner of my house. That's it. I'm really excited. I love looking at the yarn every single day. It gets me really inspired. Um, it makes me want to get through projects so that I can cast on new projects. Um, so I'm really excited to have it out and about and in my kind of daily use so that I can get inspired by it every single day. First project and finished object of the video is my full fade shawl, which is a test pattern that I did for Jen Lovett at Violet.loops on Instagram. And it is the full fade shawl. Uh, this is a project that took me about a month from cast on to cast off. There are several different options for this shawl. You can do a mini skein fade. You can do a three skein fade. The pattern will have a ton of different options when it comes out. It's actually going to come out mid July now. So uh, I just saw today on Instagram that Jen will be releasing this mid July. So once that's released, I will update a link down below so that you can access the pattern. There will be a DK weight version, a fingering weight version. And like I said, there's several different options. You can do a traditional fade. You can do an alternating fade. You can do mini skein fade. I chose the three skein fade and I chose a traditional fade, which means that I was just alternating and slowly fading in a new color before that new color kind of took over and I was slowly fading out a color. And then I did a color block of that second color and then I repeated that process for the third color. And let's look at the stats for the shawl. I have to go back because I actually signed up to do this I think in February or March, um, but she gave us such a long test window that I had two other tests, one of hers, that was due before this. So that's why I didn't cast it on until about May 7th, let's see, May 10th. I cast this on May 10th, I cast this off June 7th. Today is the 27th of June. Um, Okay, so the yarn that I used was Montana Crochet Nylon Sock in the colorways uh, Gallatin, Madison, and Jefferson. That's from light to dark. I used a five millimeter uh, Tunisian Crochet hook with long cord. Um, 
Like I said, it was a three skein traditional fade. So Montana Crochet's yarn um, is 437 yards a skein and I used almost all of that per color uh, following the pattern as written. Um, I ended up with less than about five grams per skein left. So I used most of my yarn. The yarn balls were like this tiny when I was done. Um, it is called the Full Fade Shawl because the primary, uh, the primary stitch in the pattern is the full Tunisian full stitch. It's a very beginner friendly stitch um, because you don't have to go into a stitch. You're going into the space that's created between two stitches. Um, it's also very fast, at least it is for me. It's one of my faster Tunisian stitches. And so that's why I really liked this pattern um, because it did work up fast. And I, again, I'm not a monogamous maker, but if I was, I probably could have gotten this done a little faster. My only thing is because of where I'm at with my Tunisian crochet, this kind of got a little monotonous at the end, um, which is what I imagine it is for um, folks when they're doing stockinette in the round, uh, when you're kind of near that finish line, um, but you still have quite, you know, you're doing rounds of two or 300 stitches. Um, and you, you know, you have four inches left or something like that. That's where it was towards the end at me because for me, because, you know, we're doing 200 plus stitches or so, or just under 200 stitches towards the end. Um, but it's a very fast stitch. It is beginner friendly. I would highly suggest that if you're looking to do Tunisian crochet, give this pattern a shot. My only critique, and it's not a critique on the pattern, it's a personal preference, is I don't really like, I think I'm finding I don't like shawls with three full 400 or 437 yard skeins. It just makes it really a lot of fabric around my neck. Um, and because I wear these more as statement pieces on top of like normal like plain t-shirts, or something like that. Uh, it's quite a lot of fabric to kind of control and manipulate. And so um, here it is, let's put it on. This is actually the first time I've styled it because I just weaved in the ends. So even though I finished it on the seventh, I just weaved in the ends. And so, you know, I haven't styled it or taken final pictures yet, but it's a lot of fabric here. Um, and it does take a little bit of styling, but this is a great over the shoulder shawl um, with the three skeins. So this is great kind of over the shoulder, can keep you warm. And uh, yeah, so that's how I would wear this is more over the shoulder um, just to keep me warm a little bit. Um, I might have to get maybe a shawl pin or something to kind of help with this. But I also have the Fairbanks shawl that I did that is also this boomerang style shawl that's really long um, and ended up being about th three skeins worth of yarn. And so um, keep that in mind when you're making this is uh, how you want to use the end kind of shawl. And I can tell you that this is probably my last shawl for the foreseeable future. I have several shawls, I have cowls, I love them, um, but I'm interested in making a lot of garments right now. And so um, this will probably be my last shawl for a while unless a pattern comes out that is like really screams, I must make this. Um, so this is the full fade shawl from Jennifer Lovett of at violet.loops and it will be released uh, mid to late July. Um, so keep an eye out on both my socials, her socials, as well as I will update the link below for you in the future. Too hot to continue to wear it uh, because it's probably 80 degrees in our house. And so I have not been wearing a lot of knits. I actually am wearing 
a uh, crocheted scrunchie to count as my wearing my make because it's just sometimes it's just too hot to be wearing full wool in the summer here. Our next finished object of the video is the August Tunisian Tank by Ashley Rivas, Tiny Couch Crochet on Instagram. And look at this cutie. I just wove in the ends, like literally right before this podcast. So I haven't really even worn this. So I don't have any wear uh, remarks on it for how it wears, but um, this is the August Tunisian Tank by Ashley Rebus. The yarn that I used for this project is Long Dog Yarn Merino DK in the colorway Battle of Helms Deep. And it's this gorgeous variegated blues, um, teals, and that's the back. So let's get into the stats about this. I cast this project on May 20th and then cast it off on June 26th, yesterday. I don't count weaving in the ends as the day that I finished it. Um, but yesterday I seamed it together, um, both the sides and the tops. So it's a two panel construction. You create a, a front panel and a back panel. And they're very similar. The back panel just doesn't have quite as much shaping, whereas the front panel has a little bit more shaping here to kind of come up right around here. Um, and so you seam the sides and the top together. It's a, a pretty beginner friendly pattern in my opinion, although we'll call it advanced beginner, like, or um, adventurous beginner, because I know that when I was a beginner, I hated the Tunisian Pearl Stitch, and you do use the Tunisian Pearl Stitch here, and so you have to be comfortable with it, and your Pearl Stitches are gonna look and be funky when you first start, but once you get the hang of the Pearl Stitch, you actually learn to love it. I love the Pearl Stitch now, um, and so uh, you don't need to know a lot of Tunisian stitches um, to do this pattern. Um, so this pattern is intended to have three to five inches of negative ease. I made size extra large, the fourth size in the pattern, which corresponds with a 46 inch bust. And let me tell you, I learned a few things about myself, my bust, everything when I was doing this project. So I had intended to make the extra large, which in the pattern corresponds to the 46 when, before you get the full pattern. Once you get the size chart in the full pattern, the uh, extra large, the fourth size in the pattern corresponds to the 44 to 46 inch bust, which gives you three to five inches of negative ease. Going into this, I, was under the assumption that I had a 45 inch bust. Um, my bust size has just fluctuated a lot. You know, I've made things that are way too big because I thought I had a 48 inch bust. My 45 inch bust was gonna give me four inches of negative ease. Now, of course I did not use the yarn that was called for in the pattern. I chose wool, wool does stretch quite a bit, especially super wash wool. And when I went to block this, I was starting to get about um, a 22 to 23 inch panel, um, which means I was gonna end up with 44 to 46 inches uh, for the bust once it's done. I didn't make any modifications to, to the pattern um, for my size. I just made it two size. I did hit gauge. Um, I did block my gauge swatch, but I still didn't um, end up with the size that I was hoping for in the end. So because the final measurement was for the panel once dry and seamed together was 22 inches, which corresponded to a 44 inch final bust, 
Um, I actually ended up with uh, one inch of positive ease um, instead of negative ease. Now, at the end of the day, that's fine because normally I like things with positive ease, but because of the way this is, was designed, it was really designed for negative ease. Um, even I had a conversation with Ashley uh, in Instagram chat um, about it is if she had designed it for positive ease, she wouldn't have made the dip so deep here. Um, and so she gave me some suggestions for if I wanted to like put something here, um, I could. It doesn't make that big of a deal for me. A one inch of positive ease is just fine and I'm fine with the way it worked. Um, the only, mo I said I didn't make any modifications and now that I'm thinking about it, that's a lie, but it's a, a modification that's written out. So I made the straps wider. So the straps actually uh, should have been half this size, but I wanted something, since I have a larger chest, bra straps tend to be wider. And so I wanted to make sure that I had something a little bit wider that would cover my bra straps here. So that was my only modification to the pattern. Um, let's go through the gauge, uh, this more stats. So, uh, the four by four gauge was, um, 20 by 20, which I hit actually pre-block. I was 19 by 19 post block. I was 20 by 20. The hook size, um, for the pattern is four and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet. And uh, I ended up using a total of 836 yards of the Merino DK from Long Dog Yarn. Um, I ended up with about um, three quarters of a skein left. It's actually part of two skeins because I was alternating um, skeins so that I didn't end up with any major pooling or variegation issues. So on both the front and the back, I alternated uh, skeins every other row. The only time I didn't was for the straps. I used one skein, whatever was the smallest skein, I ended up using it for each of the straps on each side. Um, and so, um, yeah. So this is my first, is this my first tank top now? Yeah, I've made a what was supposed to be a tank, but I would call it more of like a, sh a little bit of a cap sleeve or short sleeve. Maybe it's not my first tank, it's not. But um, it will now be a good staple in my wardrobe. I also see myself wearing this, not necessarily in the dead of summer here, but because I live in LA, um, it stays nice all year round. And so I see this as a layering piece uh, more in the fall once it's not 100 degrees and winter and spring um, with like my cardigan. So I could see myself layering this with my Muna cardigan, um, but I'm really excited. It's great alone or paired with uh, a layering piece. So I'm super excited to get this in the rotation once it start, it cools down quite a bit. It's just, we've had a heat wave of like in the 90s. And so I'm hoping to it, for it to get back into the low 80s, 70s, um, because my house stays relatively cool for most of the day. It just doesn't get hot until about four o'clock. So I can wear this in the morning and the afternoon, um, and then I have to change out of it by the end of the day but I'm super excited. I'm really happy with it. I kind of want to make a mini version and I don't know if I can kind of finagle my way into making a mini version for my daughter with the leftover yarn. I don't, I only have three quarters of a skein. I don't think that's enough, but maybe I make it in just another contrasting yarn or something like that. But this would be a cute tank top for her. So Ashley, if you're watching, you should make a mini version of it. I think that would be really cute and it's not complicated in terms of like the the um the pattern like 
not that it's not complicated for her, but like in for me to do the pattern. It was great in terms of like repetition. Like I, un, once I got the stitch pattern down, it was kind of like, oh, I could do this for X amount of rows. And then, and then I would refer to the pattern again when I had to focus on like decreases um, or the straps, but it's great TV watching. Um, and I don't think there's, there's like one or two mistakes in here, but for the most part, um, I'm really happy with it uh, and how it turned out. And I'm excited to wear this probably the next podcast, especially if I can get the air on in our house. But yeah, I'm super excited with the August Tunisian Tank by Ashley Rivas, Tiny Couch Crochet. Those were my finished objects of the video. And now we're gonna talk about my works in progress. Where do I even start? Let's look at my list. Okay, so the first whip we're gonna talk about is my Playdate Tea by Callie Reedy. And I was able to, I think the last time we checked in, I was probably four to eight rows from splitting for sleeves. Um, and I had a little snafu um, I went, I was done with the yoke increases and I went to uh, put it on barber cord so I could try it on and my barber cord snapped and about 75 stitches fell off my, fell off at anything. I went into a tizzy and a panic and um, it was just, it was not good. It was really bad. But I was able to pick up at least all of the stitches, even if it wasn't the correct row, I was able to pick up all of the stitches. I then put this thing in timeout for a few days. I was gonna have a friend look at it, but we couldn't meet up. But then I went to stitch night and my friend Melissa um, was able to help. So I was able to myself get all the stitches back up to the correct row. And then Melissa looked at it to see like, did I twist stitches or anything? And so um, I was able to get everything back in order. I'm really proud of myself. A little patience, a little time out, and uh, we were good. So I split for sleeves. I have both the arms on hold and I'm on the body. Um, I'm about three or so, three, three and a half inches on the body. The yarn that I'm using for this project is Yarn Nouveau Yak DK, which is a blend of Superwash Merino, Yak, and Silk. Um, I cast this project on at the end of May, May 27th, and I'm hoping to finish this in early July, so it'll be probably about a month and a half. This is my Flock Along project, so I will be going to Flock and this is yarn that I bought at Flock last year. And so this is the summer make along that I am doing on Instagram with Flock. And so I thought it'd be great to use yarn that I got at Flock last year because I didn't actually get a lot of yarn at Flock last year. Um, and so I'm excited to have this done. So my goal is to get it done in early July, but I have until early August to get it done. Um, the sleeves are actually like almost there. I think I have, I don't remember what the pattern calls for, but I think I have maybe like two inches or an inch or so of decreases and then I do ribbing. So the, the sleeves will fly off like once the body's done. Um, and I am super excited to get this pattern done and wearing it. Um, I have a little stitch marker from where I am this week and how much I've done this week. This is my Hello Lavender stitch marker that I got last year at Flock. Um, it is the Flock stitch marker from last year. I'm loving this tee. I love the little eyelet detailing here as the raglan increases. And I'm just 
really loving knitting raglan tees. I think that that is what I feel comfortable at right now. Um, and so I'm like, okay, what's my next raglan tee? And so if you have suggestions on raglan tee patterns, let me know. Um, but I will probably make this again um, with just some different yarn. Um, but as I was making this, it got me thinking about my Lento and the, you know, a T pattern. And I really liked the open gauge of the Lento. Um, this doesn't have so much of an open gauge. It's pretty dense fabric. Um, I know it'll loosen up once I block it a little bit, but it's pretty dense fabric. You're using four millimeter needles for the body um, on DK weight yarn. And so it is pretty like labor intensive, at least for me as a baby knitter, to do the all the rounds in stock and knit. And so I was looking for a pattern that maybe had a little bit more open gauge. And I saw uh, the Crayabea Rebecca Close um, two patterns, 20 tops video. And that got me excited about the Tolsta T and the Tolsta Tank. And so I knew what yarn that I wanted to use for the Tolsta T and I cast it on. I actually was going to make a different tank top of this as part of my summer plans, but I'm uh, changing things up a little bit. I am going to, uh, so my next whip is the Tolsta T, which is a more open gauge pattern. And there's so many modifications, like kind of almost an overwhelming amount of modifications. You can make a long sleeve tee, you can make a short sleeve tee, you can have bust shaping based on your bust size, you can have a fingering weight version, you can have a DK weight version. And, um, I had wound up yarn for a tank top that I was going to make, but I wasn't in love with the yarn combination because it was a striped tank top. It was the Day Off Tank by Ashley Rivas, Tiny Couch Crochet. And I loved the base color, but I couldn't find a corresponding uh, mini or scrap yarn that I had wanted to use. I'd come up with like a creamy, beige but I didn't really like that or creamy white uh, but I didn't really love 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 that so I had three scouts skeins already wound up and so then I decided once I found the Tolsta tee that I was going to use them and there are three skeins of Explore Knits and Fiber nylon or Denali sock which is their 80% superwash merino 20% nylon 400 yards. I'm not sure about the colorway because I did get it off a, um, a dish stash sale. Um, but it's like a minty green and I thought that would be really cute as a t-shirt. I have cast on the Tulsta tee. I am, I did the ribbing and I am on the German shirt rows, although I might have to tear out the German shirt rows because of where she places her beginning of round marker. Normally it's in the back, like middle, and I don't have to think about my increase until I hit the raglan corners for my shoulders, but she places it as one of the shoulders. And so I think I've forgotten to do increases on one of those shoulders. So I unfortunately may have to tear out the German short rows. Hopefully I can salvage the ribbing so I don't have to do the ribbing over because the ribbing is like a day's worth of work for me um, just because I am a baby editor and I am a little bit slower when it comes to ribbing. Um, and so I'm hoping I can pull back and um, salvage it. But I'm super excited to have this worked up. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might be able to finish this before flock, but I'm not like putting a ton of pressure on myself because then I would have two t-shirts for flock. Um, and because I'm going, both, I got a ticket for both days, um, because primarily I'm going to film, check everything out on day one and then go back to kind of really hang out, stitch, shop, all that on the second day. And so 
I'm excited about the toasted tea. Um, you know, surprisingly, like because it is that open pattern, it's working up pretty fast. Um, you're using three and a half millimeter needles for the body um, and two and, and three quarters, 2.75 millimeter needles for the ribbing. I didn't have 2.75, so I just used 3.0 because that's what I have. I have interchangeable shorties, um, Knitter's Pride interchangeable shorties. And so I used that. I'm hoping that's just fine, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about the Tolsta Tea and I can see myself making multiple of these. Um, the pattern's pretty well written and uh, I'm excited about, I keep saying that, I'm just excited. I just, I love seeing my um, knitting grow and I can see my progress. So I'm also trying to think about like what additional skills like what's my next skill that I want to learn in knitting and it's one of two things lace knitting so I might do either that salty air tea or the ranunculus or the love note those are on my make my top makes for the year list and or um, starting flat so whether it's a cardigan or a tank top starting flat so I'd have to do knits and pearls um, and then joining um, so that's kind of like what do I want to work on next um, it probably won't be until later this summer or the fall that I get to something like that but I will probably make another one of these too because um, I think it's a perfect two skein project which is another reason why I really liked the Tolsta T because of the open gauge I think even in my size I can make this I'm making the size extra large well it's not extra large it's size I didn't write it down but I think it's the 47 inch bust the next time we talk I'll I'll get the stats for that um, or actually I'll put them in the details below, but, um, I think it's like 47 inch change inch bust. And so, um, so that I have a couple inches of positive ease. So those were my knitting projects. And next I have two sweater projects. Uh, one is a test and one is a sample that I'm making. So. First, let's talk about the sample that I am making. I am making the Influencer Sweater by Jennifer Lovett at Violet.Loops, and I am making a sample uh, for Sam at Clockwork Fiber Company using her Analog DK, which is her non-superwash merino. And I'm about halfway through the back panel. Um, my goal this week is to finish three quarters of the panel um, because I had wanted to finish that tank top first. That was kind of like my top priority to get that casted off. And then I went and cast on a new project, but um, I should be, by the time we're done, we're back together. I should be done with the back panel. So I'm using her analog DK, which is her non superwash Merino. Um, and this is the colorway Beachcomber. This is the colorway Homestead. This is the colorway Homestead. And you can't really see it, but I have about two stitches of the colorway Cardigan, which is the third color C of the pattern. And it is a color block Tunisian crochet sweater that is done in panels and then seamed together. So I'll have a front panel, a back panel, and two sleeves seamed together. And then I will add ribbing to this. I have about two months to get this done. Um, and I'm on pretty on target. I'm, my goal is to get it um, to her that last week of August, because she wants it back September 1. Um, so my goal is to get this done August 26th. 
and then ship it off back to her. Um, I'm really happy with the yarn. It, it's got lovely stitch definition. I had never really worked with um, untreated wool. Um, and so this is my first project with non superwash yarn and it is really gorgeous. The pattern calls for a six millimeter hook. When I did my swatch, I was um, off. And so I went down to a five and a half. I'm still a little off, um, but there's no 5.75 hook for Tunisian crochet. So I figured I could block it a little bit more um, not aggressively because I think it'll by the time I'm done it'll be turn out fine but uh, just a little block it just a tiny bit heavier um, than trying to smush it and it just be way too big I'm making size medium for Sam and yeah it's really really great um, this pattern so this is the Influencer Sweater by Jennifer Lovett, and I should have the back panel by the time we meet again. And uh, this is my first sample that I've ever made for someone, so I'm really excited. Um, because I'm making size medium, it's not taking me as long as it would because normally I make an extra large. Um, although with my whole bust fiasco lately, I don't know if I would make I'd have to really, I really need to take a better look at sizing and measuring myself before um, I start a pattern. So this is, this will be well on its way to being in a good spot the next time we meet. My last work in progress is a test for Jen Lovett. It is called the Indecision Sampler Sweater. And much like the shawl, it's a choose your own adventure sweater that is um, done in sections um, and basically done in the round. And I will say that like ish, done in the round ish, because it's not quite Tunisian crochet in the round. It is Tunisian crochet that is done flat and then joined after each row, which is really cool. And so what I'm showing you is gonna have to be ripped out, but um, I, cause I realized what I, uh, I was doing the join wrong. And so I would like to just show you a little bit. And so there will be each section throughout um, and then you split for the armholes and then you come back and uh, seam them both here and you do the arms. And it's a really exciting kind of pattern. I wasn't gonna do this um, for uh, testing, but then I decided, okay, I'll test it if I can find yarn in my stash. Well, that was just a hot mess, trying to find yarn in my stash that worked um because that I had enough of so um let's pull out some swatches so that you can see all the yarns that I swatched for this okay so the first yarn that I had swatched I actually made two swatches um, because I am having trouble hitting gauge um I had swatched this Vitalana Oasis in the colorway I think it's called Casablanca and I really wasn't in love with either the six and a half or eight millimeter swatch. It was really holy. Um, I think that this yarn, it's a single ply yarn. And I think I would say it leans perhaps a little bit more towards a light DK. It's not sport for sure, but I definitely think it's a light DK. I then swatched some Lion Brand Respun yarn. And I actually really liked this yarn and I was gonna use this yarn, but then I had done this, this yarn in um, a blanket and I had put it through the wash because I don't care about my acrylic makes. 
I had put it through the wash and I just didn't like how the yarn was once it was washed. Um, and I know you're supposed to like hand wash and all that, but let's be real. I don't, I mean, for my wool stuff I do, but, um, I just, I was a little hesitant and it felt a little scratchy against my skin. And so I'm like, this yarn is more of like accessory, like blanket yarn. Um, not something I want against quite against my skin, maybe a cardigan or something, but that's not something I wanted quite against my skin. So then I settled on, uh, I swatched some more swatches. <laughs> oh, there's the other respun swatch that I did because I had it in multiple colors. I was gonna do it in this blush. <sighs> then I swatched um, some yarn that I got off of Destash uh, de stash last year. Um, it is La Bienemy Her Merino DK and the colorway um, Tidal Whispers. It's this really great beige, gray, green, teal, variegated yarn. And I wasn't really thinking about using a variegated yarn for this, but I said, what the heck? Um, I wasn't sure about the stitch definition because what's really cool about this piece being a choose yarn adventure it's really about the stitches not about the yarn um but I thought it could have some cool variations just based on the swatch um it could almost look a little stripey um so um yeah that is what I settled on I still had trouble meeting gauge. The pattern, like I said, calls for a six and a half meter, millimeter hook. Um, I made gauge barely with the eight millimeter hook. Um, and I, but I wasn't, I don't have anything bigger than an eight. I don't have a seven. I just was, it was gonna be good enough. And so that is where we're at. Um, like I said, I have to tear out most of this, if not all of this, and start all over. But the good thing is it works up pretty quickly um, because A, you're doing it in the round, you're only doing one panel essentially. Um, and so you don't have to do two panels, seam them together, add on your sleeves, all of that fun stuff. Um, and so I'm excited to see this work up. So my goal next time is to get back to this spot or further for you um, by the time we meet next, um, once I rip this out. So this is the Indecision Sampler Sweater. It will come out later this fall. The pattern's not due until late September, so I would imagine it would be an early October pattern, but we'll kind of see this evolve throughout the summer and early fall. So right now, those are all of my finished objects and works in progress that I'm working on right now. The next video I have planned that I will probably come out in another week or two will be an update to my Make, well, it was originally a Make 12, it is now pared down to the Make 9. I've got some, some completions, some things are coming off, some things are coming on. And I thought I would update you on what I'm working on, what my plans are, um, and kind of talk you through that thought process. So I'm really excited about recording that video for you. If you liked this video, please consider uh, giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you are not already subscribed, I would really appreciate that. That really helps me out. That really helps me see what you're interested in. I make a lot of short form content uh, two to three times a week and about uh, one video, long form content video every other week. I have plans to go to Flock this summer. So I will be at Flock this summer and taking you along with me. So be sure to subscribe so that you can be alerted when I upload that video. Thank you so much for watching friends. I will see you in the next one. Bye now.